Welcome to the Palace of Mega Pixels. This is Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo! Hello, and welcome to Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo. I'm your host, Stephen White. With me, as always, is my co-host, Lacey Finley. Oh, happy mud day. It's good to be back. Yeah, you were feeling a lot be better, it seems. Oh my gosh, you all. It wasn't the Rona. Yeah, I'll yeah, just put yeah. that out there. I did test myself at, with an at-home test because, well, we don't know anymore. Um, so I'm really convinced I just had a really bad sinus infection. We had so much rain and I'm very allergic to mold. Mm-hmm. And once I got a fever, that's when I went, oh, this, this can't be. And so I took a test and it said negative. And I went, yep, it went into infection territory. <laughs> and I couldn't breathe. I was miserable. Mm. So my apologies, siblings. You would have probably just listened to me sneeze and blow my nose the entire time hey, last we've, week. We've got a pretty good track record of always being here. True. You know, this is like True. the very first year we've had illness allow us to um, set aside. That's so, actually a good point because I rarely get sick. Yeah. So I, I know? feel like we've been doing all right on, on yeah. being here. So I think the siblings will forgive us for not being They seem very prompt. kind. Yes. yes. And thank you for the well wishes for those of you last week as well. I am better. Mm-hmm. I could breathe and all of that. It's good. Good times. But that just gives us stuff to catch up on now. You it's see. true. So we can talk <laughs> there about... is a lot to catch up on. Yeah. <clears throat> First of all, I wanted to talk about a few things because there was uh, one today along with this wonderful episode. Uh, mm-hmm. You'll get to see my second Joe Blow video. Yes. And I'm, I'm excited to share it because not to say that I couldn't <clears throat> be creative with the other video or... Mm-hmm. I guess I, w- I was. It was like my my introductory video, right? Your so, inaugural one. You wanted to. Yeah, I wanted. I, I was yeah. trying to be creative at times, but at the same time, I was trying to play it safe. I was like, I just want to show them what I can do. That I mm. I can do the work on time, and you know, I don't have to do anything flash, but maybe add a, a little flair to sh- say, hey, you know, yeah, I, I, I can do. It. It. I can do flair. I can, I can make some fancy stuff. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. this one. Uh, the moment I saw it, like, hey, here's your next video. What do you think? And go. I was like, dude, you just handed me the keys to the palace because I'm going to tear this up. Wolverine versus Deadpool. Oh. And I just, I felt like it was nonstop me going, ooh, I got an idea. Ooh, I got an idea. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I got an idea. So I put it together. Dude loved it and said. Uh, Of course. He he gave me like four little notes, and it was mm-hmm. like because I was that was one thing I was very meticulous about. Because last time I kept getting hit with copyright strikes, you know. Oh yeah, and I, I was I couldn't understand it. I was like, "What am I doing wrong here? Or like, what have I done that you know right. other people have not it's done?" It just yeah. it just I couldn't figure it out. This time I was very meticulous, so I kept a a barrier on my time, kind of based mm-hmm. on what the other guy said. He's like five seconds tops you know yeah it's about a, a good uh measurement of time so i was like all right mm-hmm. f- fair enough but at the same time if, if there was something within a scene that stretched out just a little bit i'd make a cut and then toss it aside and it sure. seemed to work plus i also and this is a little trick of the trade and if he's listening uh it's gonna spoil that but hey i was being i was being very sure before i handed it uh-huh. off I uploaded it to one of my uh, other channels. Like unlisted or something? Yeah, just to just see. To see cause I wanted to see how the YouTube algorithm was going to take it. And mm-hmm. said no copyright, so I was like, all right. So mm-hmm. I did good at, at keeping that away. And then, of course, the, the few notes he had were just like minor little... Because you watch something long enough and, and you're going to start missing things. Like there was sure. one thing i watched that so many times and i don't know how i missed it it was just like a little something i just needed to scrub out mm-hmm. and went right over my head so they weren't like major 
oh, we can't do this or we can't do that. It was just like, do you yeah, think you restart could restart over? Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was kind of like, could you tighten this up just a, just a hair or maybe scrub yeah. that out? Other than that, it was fine. He he applauded my creative decisions. Ooh, I can't wait to see it then. Yeah. So like Where there we was. Get to see it. Do we know? Uh, tomorrow it'll be well today for all of you. Today. Let, okay. Monday today. So I'll Monday. share it on the socials um, as soon as it posts. If it Dang. hasn't posted already. But I'm excited about it uh, for everybody to see it. He he actually told me that there was one bit in there, which I did uh-huh. on purpose for humor. Uh huh. He said it got a chuckle out of him, and I was like, mm, "Yeah, there we go, nail it." I got it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, second of all, I I I went to a tattoo and horror convention. I wanted yes. to talk about that. I didn't get a chance to talk about it last week, but um. It was fun, you know, for what mm-hmm. it was. I got to meet a few people, and the people you saw on the socials, if I shared mm-hmm. pictures. Uh, William Forsyth was in a lot of movies, like uh, Dick Tracy in House of a Thou- No, not House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects, mm-hmm. and he was the Sheriff Wydell in that movie. And okay. Flat Top and Dick Tracy. Those are two that I know him off the top of my head. I know he's been in a lot of other stuff. Sure. I was trying to tell him when I met him that I knew him from way back to Dick Tracy. And he was like, well, I've been acting a lot longer now. I was like, yeah, I know. But that was my introduction to you at my age yeah. of 10. Right. <laughs> you know. But, I mean, he was cool. He was, he was yeah. really nice. Um, well, what, how, <laughs> how would you think that uh, Billy Zane would come off? Oh, goodness. That's a good question. Like, what would what would be your uh, default thought? I feel maybe very just chill. Mm-hmm. For some reason, he would give off the vibe of, uh, like, uh, uh, observe, oh. more observe, take in their surroundings. And then, you know, if we're talking about in line, if they're having to do pictures mm-hmm. and autographs, probably just regular cordial. Okay. Um, I mean, it, I think. Um, his attitude could be looked at as chill, or okay. Uh, it could also or, be or standoffish. S- uh, well, no, not standoffish. Just like I don't really give a fuck to be here, and I'm just oh gonna... oh. So kind of like how I saw Patrick Stewart at a con. Kind of like he was okay. So they had this <laughs> table set up with all these pictures and T-shirts mm-hmm. and whatever, like all of his merch. And then yeah. he's sitting at this high table, like with this little round, you know, bar table. Like a bar top? Yeah. Okay, yeah. He's just sitting there on a stool, flipping through his phone. And then the guy, he like didn't even acknowledge us initially. And the okay. guy was like, hey, what can we do for you? And he was like, look for something for him to sign, I guess. And he was like, okay, well, uh-huh. just let me know. And we'll pick a picture. They hand it to him, set it on his table. He sits uh-huh. there on his phone, looks down at it, slides it over, signs it, and then he pays attention to it. So it's like, oh, okay. So why don't you? Oh, just all right. Well, yeah, we don't know his life. I and again, been, <laughs> he wasn't a know? jerk. He wasn't a jerk. Yeah. it was just kind Maybe of like just one of those things where this is the first time I've had five minutes to sit. Yeah. Okay, ready to. At least he was nice when it came time to to work. Yeah, if you will. So it, it was just like, ah, yeah, I'm here to hawk a few things and make a couple of bucks. So, eh, eh. well, but again, they not make so much money at these cons. They probably should put on a bigger face. Yeah. But her smiling face. Yeah. Again, not a jerk. Clean up, man. Just, you know, kind of, eh, I'm here. Not, uh, it, it would have been nice to see a little bit more of excitement. Sure. I guess. Just, you're an actor. <laughs> Pretend like this is great. Yeah. It's amazing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what else was there? I mean, there were some pretty interesting other cats there. Um, the, the two that I wanted to save for the end, like I wanted to meet one of the main reasons I wanted to go there was to meet Doug Bradley, who's the man who played Pinhead for several Hellraiser Mm. films. I did not get a chance to meet him simply because when he arrived, like we got there, I guess, before he arrived. And then when he arrived, a line went around this area I'm sure. and i was yeah. like oh man all right so we'll wait and see if that that dies down we come back thinking that maybe it's died down and he's not there 
So I don't know if he went on break or whatever. So we're like, all right, well, we'll come back around again. Oh, and like just at the time you went, yeah. he was gone, but had been there. Okay. So it was just like, all right, well, uh, I guess we'll hit him up tomorrow because we had a two day pass and we figured if there was anything we didn't get to do on the day, the first day we went, we'd just come back the second day and see if we could hit it up. Second day, he was also not at his table. So it was like, well, I'm not going to sit here and try to chase this man. So right. this will like, just be... Did they have a schedule? Not a very set schedule to where it was like, this is this and this is that. It was oh. just like, here's all the things. Go. And then okay. other schedules for certain things. I don't know. But um, the two other ones that I got to meet and were absolutely wonderful. Felissa Rose, is. Uh, she was the main girl in sleepaway camp i don't know if you've ever seen oh the brunette yeah the one who was kind of mousy and quiet angela and was it the lead pretty much like she becomes the the slasher i haven't seen it all the way through but like i I, like enough of it to recall i think i know who you're talking about continue so felicia rose uh, felissa rose yeah felissa and she was just a delight like she She's one of those That's people that makes like. that makes you want to meet the your your um, film stars mm-hmm. and what and whatnot because she's so gracious. Like we yeah. stood in line to meet her for quite a while, but I wasn't angry about it uh-huh. because I saw why. She, she was taking her time. She was taking her time. She was talking to her fans. She was letting yeah. them know what they meant, giving hugs and and just being a good person, mm-hmm. making you feel like this is a great interaction. Right. And then of course we get up there. I'm wearing a Godzilla shirt for mind you, just because I chose that at random. I was right. Like, eh, because I didn't want to wear like a Joe Bob shirt or something like that because I kind of like you don't wear the band shirt to the right. concert <laughs> i don't that want kind. any of you to feel like i love one of you more than the other right so today i'm neutral <laughs> so i went with a godzilla shirt and as soon as we got up to her table that was her starting point for the conversation oh my god i love godzilla movies and i was like <gasps> "Ah." and then talking about how she shows them to her son and all that stuff or something she did and i don't know she just Started in with that, and then she started asking us questions about ourselves. And fun, just, yes, just a genuinely yeah. wonderful person caring enough about us. And then, funny enough, she was sitting beside. Have you ever seen a scary movie? Yes, the parody, Yeah, it's been a while, but yes. So, do you yes. remember Doofy, the the yeah, well, killer, the- but supposed mm-hmm. to be the doofus, uh, right? Uh, pa- uh, David what's Arquette, do we? Yeah. It was supposed to be Dewey, yeah. So Doofus yeah. from that movie, he was sitting right next to her, and he got into the conversation too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> fun. So it was just okay. kind of a like yeah. like a nice because she was like, "Oh my god, did you hear? They've got you know five kids, and oh my god, they've got grandkids. Oh my god!" And she looks at this guy, "I love, love. Oh my gosh, I love you guys so Aww. much." So Aww. she was just she was a delight, and uh, well, that's good to hear. Then obviously I met Joe Bob Briggs, which. Mm-hmm. Which is what I wanted to do. Uh, he, he, I think by the time, like when we got there, he had had just kind of a rough moment because he had just spilt coffee all over his table oh. and on a fan, I think. Oh, <laughs> like I didn't no. quite see how it all went down, but uh-huh. you know, there were at least one or two people standing there in front. And then all of a sudden you see him was like, go get some paper towels. and blah, blah, blah. So when we got up there, oh. he just looked a little... Like frazzled, like disheveled, uh, yeah. yeah like, he's like, "It's all right, Aww. dude. It's no problem." You know, and he's I'm just, sure they're fine. Hopefully, yeah. it wasn't steaming hot coffee and anyone got burned. Right, and I mean, if we didn't hear any screams. All day, it's probably cold. You know, yeah, yeah. Just a bummer now that someone's pants are wet. <laughs> but he was. I mean, he was pretty cool. Like, uh, I brought uh, a DVD or a Blu-ray for him to sign, or at least the, the case, because that's all I could really think of at the time. Mm. And, it's actually one that you get if you're a Patreon uh, subscriber, and that's something I recently did. Oh, because I thought, uh, you know, I, I guess I could chuck him a few bucks if if need uh-huh. be. And he, as soon as he notices, he says, "So you guys are Patreon uh, people?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Oh, cool." He's like, "Well, uh, we're we're having the jamboree in Memphis, 
And that was actually something I was sitting there thinking about. I was like, man, that would be so cool to do. And he's like, Patreon subscribers get, you know, first access to the tickets. And Ooh. Yeah. That's probably a better incentive then, because now you know you'd have sweet seats or mm. however they would do it. Yeah. So the Jamboree, they did this thing last year, which I saw and I was like, oh, man, that would be kind of cool. But eh. uh, it's like a big gathering at an actual drive-in. And they show, uh, from what I from what I know, they actually do like an actual show, like they do on Shutter uh-huh. from like the last drive-in, and then they have another show where they have a contest that you can submit your own short film, and they're going to show uh-huh. it on the drive-in screen. Ooh, yeah, so that would be fun. I actually submitted one last year. Just I, I yeah. did. I had no. <laughs> preconceived notions well, that this is yeah. gonna make it it was just like you know i i had one in mind it was an older one but i was just like well it's not even mine really i just edited it but i was just mm-hmm. like i'm gonna slide this in just just see mm-hmm. and obviously it didn't get in but it was just i wanted to see you know sure and i would still like to come up with something for a future mm-hmm. entry possibly maybe but we'll see who knows yeah but memphis that's a four-hour drive. It's with... I mean, it's not that bad. Yeah, like, that's not that bad. Get a hotel or something for just one night so you're not having to drive back after the movies. Yeah. And then, I'm, I'm yeah. honestly considering it. I just... I guess I need to see finances and time and... Because sure. it's in July. I don't know. I mean, it'd just be yeah. really cool, but I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, we'll see. Yeah. But... We'll see. But well, he did. You got to meet him then. I did, and and we actually went to a show of his on the uh, Saturday night, which was he calls it how Redneck Saved Hollywood, and it's like this um, oh. uh, kind of an essay. Like he has a, he has a screen beside you know behind him, and he's sitting there kind of narrating this uh, narrative about you know what a redneck is. And sure. when rednecks got into cinema and what are some popular redneck movies of the time and the genres and how this far it feels goes like a skit. It's insane. Oh, I just knock something straight off my table. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane, though, just to hear the history of a lot of things, because obviously the first things that you would that would come to mind would be something like deliverance. Right. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's where people's heads go. And he does yeah. talk about deliverance. But I mean, mm-hmm. there's just this deep. Like, I didn't know this. Apparently, Redneck comes from uh, Scotch-Irish Protestants. Like, that's what where it oh, yeah? derives from, apparently, huh. according to him. The the mountain man uh, yeah. topic, hillbillies, is not a redneck. <laughs> oh, just, it, they're all different. Yeah, there's like, little differences, huh? There's just, okay. like, the, the, the amount of research he put into it, and then how it all comes back around by the end, you're just like, Wow. I didn't. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> it's yeah. just, it's mind boggling. It's about a two, two and a half hour show that he's doing this, but. On how rednecks. Yes. And, saved Hollywood. Uh, saved Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's fascinating. Well, I would love to see it again. It does some. sound interesting. I'd love to hear the points being made. Yeah. It's, <laughs> you know, he, he does his usual, like if you've ever watched his show and how he sits there and starts describing something, it's mm-hmm. pretty much that same thing, except he's got like a little, uh, screenshots and and slideshow going on Mm -hmm. in the background with the occasional clips here and there whenever it deems worthy but it's just it was really (laughs) awesome i I like yeah Um, sounds like fun so yeah there's that was there anything else anything else no hey i'm good uh what have you been playing (laughs) (laughs) it's like you had a fun week uh Well, I finally uh, got to play some more Mass Effect, Mm -hmm. so it's not broken down on me since that day, thank goodness, but I have been safe scumming because now I'm aware Mm -hmm. it could happen at any moment. Um, I don't even know how far I am. Uh, It is very much a Bioware game, which is what I was wanting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really did love the Dragon Age, um, the first one, of course, Yeah, Uh, but I'm not a fan so far of this the driving in this so the way it's been going is i finally got my ship Mm -hmm. so i guess i finally got past the the setup with what i'm doing here and everything and so now i'm actually doing some missions and i had 
you have to go travel to the planet system for certain ones. So you have this huge map of the solar system, I guess, or whatever, <laughs> wherever. Maybe it's not the solar system, whatever system we're in. And you go to it, you travel, and then there might be some other little places within there. And then you could study the planets that are in this system. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can land on it because you might have a mission to go search this thing or figure out what happened to so-and-so. And so you get dropped in this car. I'll just call it a car. I don't know, some space car. And... The driving to everything is nauseating. <laughs> so I'm hoping it's just the first game problems or whatever, but <laughs> or I could just be how <laughs> it's how I play a game where I'm like straight line to where I need to go, whether it's over mountains or whatever, it doesn't matter. That's always going to be the easiest route, right? Mm -hmm. That's brain logic. I did that in Skyrim. Always wondered why I got stuck up top. I don't. It's how I live. So. But none of the surfaces are flat. Like everything's all over the place and just drive it and roll it over and it doesn't matter. Um, not a fan of that. Not a fan of that. I kind of just want to, I, I may just get out and walk. Mm -hmm. But I do have a gun on the, on the ship. So sometimes these mobs would come out of the ground like this big snake monster thing or whatever. And it was nice to just kind of, stay in my car and shoot it because I'm lazy like that instead of getting out and all of us shooting it. Um, so is the game, so, is, the, is the game or does it feel dated or at all? I, or does yeah, it... I can, I can feel it's a product of its time. Um, and it, it, it does look nice, I guess. Mm -hmm. I should have played the original because I'm I'm playing the legendary sure. edition. So supposedly fancy new paint and looks better and everything. Um, but yes, I, I think I might feel better about it because I've been reading that the mechanics and stuff improved a little bit once we got to the second one and the third one and stuff, you know. Um, but story so far, I'm enjoying. Very detailed, very depth. I was getting upset because I, I wanted to put all of my points into charm and things of that nature because I like unlocking those other dialogue options yeah. and seeing, you know, what it changes. And so I was putting all of my points basically into that. And there was a couple of dialogue choices where stuff was grayed out for me. And I'm very upset because I felt I was early enough on. Maybe I don't understand where I needed to put the points for certain dialogue options to come in. Uh, but ding, yeah. I had to take just the regular normie versions of the dialogue in the moment. So what, what do I got to do here? So I'm not very far. But I'm a little worried if that's the main mechanic for me going to conflict mm -hmm. is me just constantly getting dropped on the ship and having to drive to the points or whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm not excited about it, but I'm not terribly far, even though I, I, I think I'm like six hours mm -hmm. into the game because I played what? Well, that one time and then it kept breaking on me. And so then I gave up and had to start over. So this was the longest stretch I'd had. Um, like I just became a specter. I just got my ship. So that's why I think I'm, I'm, I'm super early on. Um, I'm enjoying the story. I kind of wish I could just do more of that or get rid of the, the, the car, but sometimes the planets are hazardous and I can only be out of my car for so long before it starts taking damage. So I'll get through it. Okay. I'm just not crazy about that portion of it so far. Mm. It just kind of made me sick to my stomach after a while. Just my car bouncing all over the place. and <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, But I did try to go play outside because it was the first weekend. We had nice weather. So <laughs> Hey, yeah, no, I, I spent. <laughs> it got to like 80 degrees and it was sunny. And I'm like, ah, mm -hmm. it's been so long. So. Um, so that was that night I tried to play some Mass Effect and then, you know, just my regular poking around on a mobile game here or there if I'm just killing a few minutes or something. But uh, I'm going to get through it. I want to get through them because I really, really did love the Dragon Age games mm -hmm. with except, you know, the acquisition or the acquisition. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we're about to talk about on the show. Um, but the, the first one and the third one, the second one, we pretend doesn't right, exist. Right. And then whatever will happen with this next one, I don't know. So 
Yeah, back when their storytelling was really, really good and everything, I want to get through it. I'm just hoping that that doesn't kill the whole first one for me, if that's going to be the main mechanic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, but that was it, really, that I put any detailed time into that I haven't discussed on the show a million mm-hmm. times over. How about you? Or did what? you even have time? You had such a fun this week, couple of weeks. This week, no. But last week, <laughs> um, I did beat Horizon. Got that oh! taken care of finally. There we go. Yeah. I, I got to a point where I started looking at what I had left to do trophy wise and just realized I might as well just beat the game and mm-hmm. to hell with all the side stuff. <laughs> and I was like, all yeah. right, it's time. It's Because t- once I hit that point, that's when I'm, I check out because I've maxed level. I'm not doing anything else important. Eh, mm-hmm. I'll just I'll move along. And story was uh, interesting. It definitely set up a, a sequel. If they wanted to go that route, or at least I feel like... Oh, I'm like sure they will. They will, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was fun, and that's about all I did. I spent yesterday <sighs> mowing a lawn, which, hey, look, I, I wanted to get out there. I wanted to, to you know... Three reasons, right? Get, Outside. Get back in it, but... Get some sun. The problem get your is... Get redneck. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is... <laughs> Is that it seems like every year when I go to mow my lawn, like the beginning of the season, my riding mower decides to not want to work. So I have to sit there and tinker with it to get it to work again. And this was no different. And it's not fun to push lawn my mow or push push mow my lawn. That's what I was trying to say. I got my words <laughs> scrambled. See? I'm looking up in my head. I'm like, I know what he said. Let me put it together. <laughs> Hold on. I was doing some Yoda talk. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I, a hill and the push mower just don't, they don't mix. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm exhausted. That's My body is in pain. And... But that's good exercise, oh, right? Oh yeah, no, no, don't get me wrong. You should, did you, but did your wife like look out the window all like, ooh. No, she wasn't even you here. Could, you could take off your shirt for her and like, ah, oh, it's so hot outside. No, she, you guys she wasn't have even that here. little fun. Aww. She was off and away. Well, for the future, yeah. just be like, hey, why don't you in the kitchen? And you just... guys have your fun little... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. But no, I mean, I, I beat Horizon. Now I'm kind of in between games trying to figure out what I want to do. I, I've i been debating, like really, mm-hmm. really debating because I want to play the new Star Wars Lego game. But at the same oh, time, yeah. I'm kind of being cheap because I'm just like, oh. I don't want to pay full price. Even though it's like, fair. Everything's expensive right now, man. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And I feel like I've got other things I could play in the meantime to allow the mm. price to come down. So Not for broadcast. Yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. I've got other things I could be playing. <laughs> I don't need to buy this new game when I've got other I games so I need games. to play first. And But that's the one I really want to play, you know, that like I'm looking at going. That's <laughs> the, the one you don't have. <laughs> right. I want to play that one. I know I've bought all these other games, but that's the one I really want. Mm-hmm. And I just... I know I could get it, but I'm just like, I'm torn, you know? Like, I do know that feeling. that what I, I want to do right now? Right. Is it Should really? I? No. Well, I, but yeah. Hmm. So, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I'll get there eventually. Yes. Because I do want to play it. I really, I really do. And I would love to support the uh, the wonderful people that put their hard work into it. And mm-hmm. I don't want to be a cheapskate, but you know, sometimes. Well, everything's getting so expensive. They, uh, well, why are, they're not asking us personally. No, but no, I, I but feel like seventy dollars. It, it's a lot. It comes back down to all that that nonsense with the Mortal Kombat thing. That's still just oh yeah me up right now. And I know that they have never done that. But mm-hmm. what you, still. What, Still, yeah. Right. You know, I paid full price for a game, and you said that I had the season pass, but they were like, nah, we're going to throw in more season passes and more Mm -hmm. content that you have to pay for. It's like, but other people are not paying what I'm paying. This is not, this is bullshit. Yeah. You know, don't. No, I I feel you. 60 bucks. That was horrible. Like, they should have given it way more time. Yeah. It was too close to when it had just released for them to have cut it so much that... Yeah, I almost feel that should have been well within your right to be, hey, I should get the difference back now yeah. because it was so soon since I purchased it. Yeah, But I'm sure their argument would be, but you see, you were helping us do that but for other people. But you got it earlier. Yeah. Wah, wah. 
well, I'm never going to go early again. I love mm-hmm. the Mortal Kombat games, but I'll never yeah, that do was, that shit again. That was bull. Yeah. I'll wait until it's ultima, ultimified out to the, right? to the brim and then set Or on, just wait a month or two. Yeah. In, like, in this case, and then it'll all just be bundled in with the regular game. Mm-hmm. It's bull. Yup. Anyway, yep. but yeah, I didn't play anything. I'm in between games trying to figure out what I want to do. Mm. Hopefully, I'll have an idea. But again, I didn't have time this weekend. Like, even yesterday. After well, you I- were out doing real world things, having fun in the real world, which I encourage. I need to do that. And friends. You know, and this, stuff. Is, this is how much I actually kind of wanted to be outside, you know, just, mm-hmm. d- despite it being kind of warm. But mm-hmm. I haven't felt warm in a while. So, yeah. I right? was exhausted by the time I finished. But to, I guess, to kind of commemorate the moment that uh-huh. it was nice and warm and, and it was nice to be outside. And I just finished a hard. I just went outside, sat in a chair in, in the shade with a beer and just uh-huh. relaxed for a moment. Nothing else. Just me, right. a beer and some, some wind in, in the shade. And it was nice. And when I was I done, bet. I got up and I go back inside. And that's mm-hmm. it. Sometimes it's all you need. Yeah. It's the little things, man. And that, I my, feel like that's I what I need to do. La- I wanted to sit outside and enjoy it, but but I say this like he's around. But the landlord um, apparently has some huge project for the last two weeks that's been having to require a bunch of banging around in the basement and out of the back door. Hmm. So the whole me wanting to sit out back and read a book yesterday was just getting crushed no. <laughs> over and over. So. Anyway, don't know why I felt like whining about that, but continue. But no, no. It was no, like, I was jealous. I'm like, you got to sit outside. It was just nice and quiet. Well, you quiet. Constantly walking in front of you. I usually have loud, big old trucks. <laughs> Country boy oh. trucks drive down our road. <laughs> Hear me. We're a big old truck. <laughs> I've, re- I've, I've been mockingly making songs. Country boy truck, look at my big old truck. I'm a country boy. This is my truck. That sounds exactly like anything going to yeah the Billboard top ten mm-hmm. on the countryside. I imagine she thinks my truck <laughs> is sexy. Oh yeah, it turns me on. <laughs> it really turns me on. Uh, as you can tell, I hate. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I. I don't want to get, go off on a rant. Anyway, no. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, it's nice to, to enjoy. I want to enjoy the little things more. You know what I mean? I, I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even nice. like I, I know that there are things that I'm doing that I enjoy, but just times I just I want to be left alone and I want mm-hmm. to just enjoy a moment. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you had the chance, yeah. even if it was only for a few moments. It was fine. Yeah. So, hey, uh, you got any news for us? We had so much news. Okay. This week was a little insane, which I think made up for the fact that last week I thought there wasn't much. So then they were like, all the news this week, Lace. I'm like, all right, sure. Uh, So real quickly, it looks like acquisitions is just going to be in our news cycle for a long time here. (laughs) Who's getting who now? Everyone's buying everyone up. Um, So I'm sure we've been seeing the rumors that Sony has been eyeing some more studios to snag up. Mm -hmm. Um, I I feel like we've reported that they've not been hiding that fact. Um, So this week it was revealed that from software may be the next target. Um, Dr. Seekin Toto, who is CEO of the game consultancy company Canton Games. Again, it's all rumors, you guys. So we keep this all together, right? Um, so that they uh, looking at or had been looking at it, who acquired it in 2014. So they're owned by Kodakawa Corp. <laughs> since 2014. I'm going to butcher all these names. Maybe you should report this one since you've been oh, yeah. you know, studying uh, Japanese, it could probably say all the names uh, proper or anyway. But but last year, Sony did acquire almost a 2% stake in Kod, uh, Kodokawa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. It's not intentional. I practice beforehand, too, and it sounds better than when we go live and then it, I lose it. But anyway, so that, that company, 
that I'm nailing each time I'm trying to say it has a market valuation of about $3.2 billion. So if the acquisition rumor is true, Sony could look to purchase from software from them for like, <laughs> honestly, not a lot if you're looking at how much everyone's been buying everyone. Yeah, for. yeah. Um, so, but the nice thing for that, if Sony did, they would also get companies Gotcha Gotcha Games and Spike Chunsoft, which I know I've heard of, especially in mobile market, yeah, um, as well them. as a number of other publications and animation uh, studios and another one with a grain of salt. But if they did, it sounds like they'd get a little bit more than just the From Software. Um, we'll see. I guess if they're going to swipe them up as a, as a, as a company. Um, and then I saw some other rumors this week about Ubisoft possibly mm. getting sold. I, I, I'm putting that, I'm putting a pin in that one because a lot of the stuff that I was reading this week just sounded like they're tidying up some books kind of situation, which means they could be preparing themselves for a sale or wanting to, uh, but like the Guillermo family owns a good chunk still of the company. So I don't know. There was a lot of different stuff. So I think we should put a pin in that one for now because mm -hmm. there wasn't anything solid that led me to believe anybody's particularly right. poking in that in there right now. But um, it does seem like they're cleaning some stuff up, getting their books in order, all this, which I guess in the industry could lead to wanting to kind of offload sure <laughs> get your ducks in a row so it's not a complete shit box for people to buy <laughs> and i mean you're looking at all the people who left the company in december they were calling it the great exit you know so i don't know there could be something going on there and honestly at this point it might be another situation where i'm like good somebody buy it because they're not going to clean up mm -hmm. nothing a better ubisoft's been asking for longer than than, than we've even known about Activision Blizzard. I'm just saying in time frames of what we knew, not yeah. when it started. Um, and has anything changed on their side that I've noticed? Mm. No. I feel like I've not seen any progress made with Ubisoft, but eh. I don't know. Yeah, no. Uh, anyway, Star Wars. Star Everyone Wars. Everyone should be. We're going to have so much Star Wars. I hope Star Wars fans are ready. Because now that EA doesn't have its stranglehold, we're reading so many places. You, ooh, ooh. you, you want them ooh. to be excited? No, no, no. They're going to bitch and complain about something. Continue. Well, <laughs> true. But my hope is you should be excited if you're a Star Wars fan. Um, but more inbound. More coming. Um, Skydance New Media and Lucasfilms are teaming up Sweet. for a Star Wars game. A new, richly cinematic action-adventure game with an original story. Which means Amy Hennig. So, I have a little faith. Mm -hmm. A lot of faith, actually. I wonder, um, didn't she have one that got canceled? Yes. So, I wonder yes. if they're going to revive that one. I was kind of curious if she's like, you know, we had really good stuff here. There's no reason to... Yeah, it's you know, junk the whole thing. Um, but yeah, so she was the creative director, if some people don't remember, on three films in the Uncharted franchise and worked very hard in those. So lots of experience assembling developers and artists for AAA experiences and action adventure games. So I, again, I'm not a huge like Star Wars itself fan, but I like games. If you get a good story and all that kind of stuff together, I could be very interested. So that's like the third or fourth one now that I've heard um, getting going. Star Wars game from different teams. But yes, so um, keep your eye on that space. You're going to have so much Star Wars games. Uh, Quantic Dream, geez, now Sky Dance and this. Mm. I don't know. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Um, here's what I wanted to complain about with you siblings because I feel this could be one that could really do it. Uh, ads and video games. I saw no. a lot of talk about that this week. Uh-huh. It was reported that Microsoft is looking into how to break into in-game advertising and could use it as a way of increasing access to its game streaming membership with the Game Pass. Uh, currently looking into ad tech companies and agencies to work out in-game ad inventory. Um, I mean, they already have ads and lobbies of games and the Xbox media, you know, um, was also noted because I had to dig into this because other inventory space to me means outside of if you're throwing it on a billboard in a game or at a bus stop in a game or whatever 
all right. I mean, whatever. To me. Yeah. Now, if you're going to be breaking in some sort of ad as a mobile free game, that's where I have an issue. Um, But... Uh, It was noted in a recent research that 93% of media buyers intend to run in-game advertising by 2025. So, okay. I I hear where you're coming from. Mm. I get it. You know, breaking into my game for ads. Now, why, if if they want to do it subtly, and I'm not trying to give them ammo, but for for the sake of the, the gamers... Mm-hmm. And not having to deal with it. Think of a game like, and I know this won't apply for all games, but think of a game like Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. You have all of New York. Yeah. You, you could put up billboards, mm-hmm. videos, things mm-hmm. like that all around. So it's, you're showing advertising, yeah. just not in my face. Right. Just kind of here. Where I have to stop what I'm doing to pay attention right. to it. It's yeah. there. I'll see it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's just the best thing. Yeah. You know, you keep and showing me a Coke sign, I might start thinking, you know what? I kind of want a Coke. You yeah. Know? Like, that's fine to a degree. And then if you're taking all this ad money, maybe we don't have to pay 70 bucks a game. Right? I know. I know. I know. What am I talking? That's that's crazy talk. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah. So when they were saying in-game inventory, I think it's things like we just discussed, billboards, bus stops, buses, things you would see in the real world mm-hmm. walking around, right? Um, so when you venture into mobile gaming, this, of course, is very common, right? We, we've kind of accepted the fact that if it's free, we'll probably get an ad. We don't like it, but we're cheap, right? So we accept it. Um, and then I feel like if they're trying to push that into their Game Pass streaming games, unless they're offering some sort of cheaper alternative kind of how a movie streaming service might Mm -hmm. like you can pay five bucks with ads or 10 bucks without. Um, I just feel like it's a really weird slope to be going down. Now, if you're all going, ha ha ha, I'm a Sony fanboy, so I'm good. Oh no, they're talking about it too. I just want you to know. I also read an article specifically calling out about where Sony is looking into that same thing. So nobody is safe. All right. So um, uh, the concern was, well, I think this is the reason why we're going to see it. The article I was reading used (laughs) Forza Horizon 5 um, as an example because it hit over 15 million players in its first two months, which they think would be enough to be attracting those advertising dollars because that's a lot of eyes. So console, PC versus mobile, I think have less of an issue with a billboard or a bus stop. But if you're going to stop my game for an ad, I do have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I do. So yeah, Sony is also working to bring ads to free to play PlayStation games. According to a report by the Insider, the Insider, uh, the ads would appear in games and are meant to give uh, game developers a way to monetize their work, encourage them to continue building free to play games. And the end games ads are expected to launch by the end of the year. And would appear in inconspicuous places within the games. So uh, that I don't care. But you will get rewards for watching ads is one of the things they were talking about. And ads would be sold through a private marketplace. So, so another reason to go indie. Mm-hmm. All right. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Okay. Here's mm-hmm. what I'm going to tell yeah. you. Okay. This is what we're going to talk about. Just pay attention. Okay. <laughs> you don't understand. Yeah. Something tells me. That if this mm-hmm. goes through, which it will, because the gaming industry is um, has no shame anymore, All right. they will start charging extra to remove the ads. You watch. Oh God! You watch. Right. I didn't even think of that. Oh. Think about it. They're gonna get their money one way or the other. Oh like, my God! People are gonna bitch and complain because they have to look at ads, but they'll be like, "Okay, well." well Wait, hang on. Uh-huh. Here's a pass to remove all ads. Meh. How about that? I hate I hate this world anymore. And they'll I hate it. And you know people will buy it because they'll be like, well, yes. I want to play this game, but I don't want to do it with all these stupid ads. So how bad do I want these ads gone? 
if you're going to charge me full price for anything, you better not interrupt my experience for an ad. I'll just put that out there right now. The company that actually starts doing that and charges me $70 to where I need to have an ad break to earn a reward, you can F right off and we're done here. Mm -hmm. You put it on a billboard, Spider-Man drinks a Coke, I don't care. Those things are fine. But you better not think I'm going to pay 70 bucks then just to do that all over again. I'll just stop. You're going to have people pirate it again. Yeah, I know. And and in, in those cases, I'll be like, yeah, fine, sure. I've never been for pirating it, but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to pull this crap? We'll see. But um, both both companies are looking into it right now. Both of our bigger companies are looking into it. PlayStation's promising it in their free games by the end of the year. Um, and we'll see what that develops into, I guess, as uh, more ad dollars start coming in. I'm, I'm, I'm warning you, just... Make a note of this today. We should time stamp it. Yeah. When when it it eventually comes to light, when you hear that first headline, now paying to get rid of it. It's it's mm-hmm. gonna happen. Oh my god, you're probably right. Uh well, we had a VR showcase yeah. sort of this week. Um Meta Quest, mm-hmm. I guess is what we're calling it now. It's it's a second gaming showcase actually that they've ever done. Um, so some of the games actually look like fun, nothing necessarily exclusive, but it was showed off on the meta sure. VR quest, but Ghostbusters VR was shown off on there, which actually looked kind of fun if you have friends. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's announced for the quest two with Sony pictures, virtual reality and in games. If I'm saying that N and then games name of the team, um, it was a short cinematic trailer. So mm. But I could see that being the gameplay, having played some VR with those kind of graphics and sure. stuff. That, that 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 made sense that that would be the gameplay. Um, you get to run Ghostbusters HQ in San Francisco and solve a mystery. I thought it looked fun. I don't know. So it supports four-player co-op. So that's always my downfall with anything. Yeah. Um, it's just I don't know people to play these things. Uh- <laughs> I mean, I'd like to try it. It looked a lot of fun. It did look like fun, right? It's just a brand new uh, story within that universe. And I mean, heck, we're in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, so uh, Resident Evil 4, the because Mercenaries we, we VR. We haven't played this enough. No, no. we have. Yeah, we just keep slapping new paint on this one, too. <laughs> but uh, they, 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 when they had, did the Resident Evil 4 VR mode, they left out the beloved Mercenaries mode, which oh. they're now letting us know is is was released actually on the day of the announcement 420 <laughs> hmm. um as we might recall it released in 2021 so they added the horde mode in now uh they resolved it uh by bringing it as a free update so if you've already got it you get it so just you own the base game you can get the horde mode um you get leaderboards it looks like exclusive to the vr experience 20 new challenges Ooh. which i never played a lot of the challenge in I, I beat four, but this was mm-hmm. a long time ago. Um, and then just more goodies made for VR. So if you were like, damn it, where's my horde mode? There you go. Ooh. I think it would scare the crap out of me. Uh, you know, in I VR? Just, yeah. Mm-hmm. I did get through one but that zombie one was shooter. A little bit more like action Arizona pack. Sunshine or something. I think yeah. I played... But remember, I mean, that one, a little bit more action. I mean, it can be terrifying, but compared to something like uh, Seven, where that's tension. And it's, yeah, first person. No, mm -mm, no. mm -mm. I didn't even play the the flat version of Seven. I I watched it. I still have Eight. That's the game I should be playing next. Oh, there you go. See? But I just. Uh, Solved. (sighs) There's just something I'm just I'm not feeling it for some reason. I don't know uh, why. Um, I think then, I'm, yeah, I can't I, fix that. I think I'm I'm checked out of the Resident Evil averse because I just. I mean that's fair. It has been I ain't going on a while, but this is a new one. Yeah, Lady Do- Domitress. I know. I hope I said that right. <laughs> just kind of. I practiced so hard that day. I was corrected eh. to say it right. That's fair. I might actually just have to try and play it. And see if I get get into it. Because at least then I'll know. Because if I put in an hour or two and I'm just not feeling it, I'll put it down. Mm -hmm. That that to me is my 
uh, gauge now. If I don't, says. if I'm not drawn back to wanting to play it, if there's nothing mm-hmm. drawing me back, then I know I have no interest in playing it. That's fair. That's a fair judgment, judge mm-hmm. especially if you gave it a couple hours. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 Retribution. Uh, players go back to NOLA, uh, which shows us another trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, it said it would be more deadly, and fewer resources, Ooh. more walkers, and a bloodthirsty threat that hunts you across the city. So you have that constant threat of something following you the whole time? Wonderful. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, arriving later this year. Supposedly later 2022, you could play that one on a ZVR Quest 2, MetaQuest, whatever we're calling it. Uh, VR football. Did you see that? No, I didn't. NFL Pro Era. It's the first VR, official VR NFL game. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't care about football, but that actually looked kind of fun. Like the way they put you in the in as the quarterback and throwing it around. I could see me wasting time with it for like an hour and then I'd probably never pick it up again. But if you like football and football games and have VR, it looked like it was fun. Well, see, now you need to have like pain receptors so when they tackle you, you feel it. Get those ch- – uh, they do have those vests Yeah, that has the haptic feedback and, and things cool. of that nature. Oh. I don't know. I'd probably have panic attacks. I'm yeah. like, no, I feel like I'm suffocating. It's Maybe. all too much. Um, yeah, <laughs> I've never gotten so into it that I need that. Those it, those are things are expensive. Um, then, of course, Among Us VR mode. Yeah. Official. Not just a mod anymore, people. Um, Inner Sloth and Robot Teddy and Skeel, Skeel Games <laughs> are doing the uh, uh, Among Us VR mode, uh, releasing during the holidays of 2022. Um, there wasn't much more to report than that. People I know have been enjoying it as a mod, like I said, for a while. Now you'll get the official version, uh, which should be fun for those who are a fan of the game and VR. Cool. I, I should have played Among Us. It did look fun. But again, friends thing. I thought you would like this one. Moss Book 2. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was originally on PSVR, so it's set to come to Quest 2 this summer. Uh, this entry continues the story from the first game, and you can go on another adventure with Quill to the end of the merciless rule of the arcade and save the world from the great unmaking. Yes. It's, uh, I knew you really liked the first one. Yeah, so no, it was, it was a lot of fun, so... I would, I would I love to return to that world. He's so cute. Mm-hmm. It's just cute. I, I played some of the first one. I don't remember now why I didn't beat it. I might have still been trying to get my VR legs at the time. Could be. And so when you can't sit in a headset for too terribly long. Mm. Um, did it even have the full game or was it a demo? Might anyway, have been a demo. Maybe that was it. Because I played it on the PlayStation VR, mm. I think. Maybe I don't. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just digressing now into other stuff. Uh, <laughs> Stress Level Zero announced uh, Bone Lab, which I remember when they were talking about Bone Works mm-hmm. a couple years ago. Heavily moddable, very customizable. Um, I-, I never played it. I knew people who loved it, and looking at this one, it just looks like way more fun within that world. If that, if you played the other one. Um, Players will need to escape execution in a mysterious underground lab in a world that reacts just like the real one. Ooh. Just like it. Um, I don't know. There were other announcements as well. We didn't detail all of them because there was a lot. Yeah. I was actually surprised how many games they had during that showcase. So I was just trying to flip around to the games and just watch what they showed off from that. Um, but at least it didn't look like all of them were Quest 2 exclusive. So, which I some it, of some of it's dead to me in that case because yeah. no more money for Zuckerberg for this girl. But, uh, yeah, yeah. When I saw the Ghostbusters thing, I just thought it was a, a new game, and then I started noticing other VR game announcements. And I was like, okay, so there was a VR thing happening, mm-hmm. and then. I uh, I was kind of in that same boat. I was like, this better not just be meta exclusive or I'm going to be pissed. Some of them probably will be. <clears throat> I mean, when they bought Oculus, I'm sure. But not, I don't with, know. not with something like Ghostbusters. Oh, I would think not. I mean, no. come on. That would be kind of silly, yeah. I think. Well, and I mean, yeah, Resident Evil 4. I mean, we already had that on, on other stuff. Uh, Saints and Sinners. So, yeah. So at least... At least there's that, because I don't plan on ever getting another 
anything in that in that world. The damage has already been done, yeah, and I'm trying to mitigate it moving forward. Facebook not getting and... more of my information or any of that. I saw this might be off base. I don't know if it's real. I should have looked into it, but I saw on Twitter where somebody was saying that they had to show their ID to create an account on Facebook now or Meta or whatever it is. I feel that has to be fake. No. Or are there countries that demand it? Because that seems a step in a direction where a lot bigger of a conversation would have to be had. If I, if I can kind of relate to it in a way, there was a time uh, about a month or two ago when I got a new uh, phone upgrade mm-hmm. and I could not get into my Instagram account. Now, keep that in mind because Instagram, Facebook, Meta, the right, whole... same. All right. So I couldn't get into my Instagram account and I was like, all right, so what did I do wrong or what did I forget? And mm-hmm. I was struggling to remember a password or some way to get in because for whatever reason it was trying, when I'd go to sign in, it would it kept going through this loop where it would either not load the page or it would uh, say, "Well, hey, you need to to do this." And I'm like, "Well, I can't do this because I'm on my phone or you're not opening it up when I'm on here. So what your yeah. security measure is screwing me over. I don't know what the hell. You know? stuck in this loop. Yeah. Oh, I remember what it was. Um, you ask it to send you a code to prove who you mm-hmm. are, and every yeah. time it would send the code, it was just an empty message. Yeah, oh, so it was just like, I don't, I can't sign in. And they're like, well, uh, try signing in this way. And I would try signing in another way. And it, it was faulty. And they were like, well, what oh. about your backup codes? I don't remember shit about backup codes. Right. So I remember they'd send you like a list of like, where am I supposed to save this? And remember to bring it back at any. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I eventually decided that I was going to reach out to. The Instagram people was like, I, I don't know what to do. You're you're not. I can't get a message. I can't yeah. get a code. You're not helping me. Yeah, nothing is working. Help me out here. They asked me to send a picture of myself and all of my information written down on a piece of paper to prove that it was me. Like birthday, yeah. uh, screen name, mm-hmm. all this stuff. And I was like, ah, man, come on. But eventually, I was able to log in from a computer get all my information and then bring it back ah so i I went around their bullshit yeah well that might be just the case which would be a whole other conversation (laughs) so So, um, i guess keep that in mind i guess keep that in mind i'm not Um, saying that's 100 percent true or accurate that they're asking for ids but i mean it it's not far-fetched Right. Just say that. I guess how else are you going to prove it was yours? Right. I don't know. Because that's probably one of the last places people still use their real names. Sure. <laughs> I mean, back when we all started, you know, MySpace and all that stuff, we just put our names up there. Nobody was thinking about any of that stuff, you know? Um, well, or nefarious reasons why they would have to hide mm. their real name. Anyway, I have a few quickets. Woo, quick I have a few quickets. Uh, we got to see a Let's Play of Evil Dead game. Yeah. with hosted by my Bruce Campbell mm-hmm. and uh, his son Andy and three other streamers played it live you know it was fun to watch did you get to watch it I, I think not. it was only about 10 15 minutes long um, or at least the cut that I watched that was put together so it was kind of what I was thinking mm-hmm. um, you know you're all playing cooperatively together um, one person gets to play the Henrietta oh Okay. Okay. So that I wasn't positive how it was going to work. So Andy played um, uh, Henrietta, and while the other three, three or four streamers just played, um, you know, you get to play different people within the Evil Dead universe. So one of them did the uh, King from mm-hmm. Army of Darkness. Um, the other one, you know, played Ash from Evil Dead Two, and then you had Cheryl. Um, so you just chose how you wanted to put it together, and it was interesting because Henrietta stalks you through the woods and can take over your character. So could, um, you know, just take over you. If you're just one of, we'll call it survivors just for the sake of the conversation. So if you're playing one of them, they could just take over your character for a while and go nuts. And then they eventually would have a moment where you would all have to like a boss fight 
if he'd gotten enough power or whatever deadite juice you need to be like, hey, no, I'm Henrietta. And I and then this me just laughed because you remember how Henrietta appears, mm-hmm. right? And then Bruce just kept yelling, motorboat, 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 motorboat. And I was just like, this is so gross and lovely and weird. And I'm just like here for it. Um, so I need friends whose people have to play this with me because I'm going to badly want to. Well, and you know, I'm um, in. So. Yes, you've got to. I think Vaz told me I needed to buy it for him and oh. then he would play. Um, okay. Yeah, it was a good offer. But you know what? Whatever. If that gets people to play, I might buy it for mm-hmm. him. Then. And then we only need one more person. That's right. <laughs> so we need another human, but I'm here for it. If you didn't watch it, go watch it. It was fun. It's only like 10, 15 minutes of your time. I'll give it a look. Uh, and uh, give it a little bit more of a look of how the gameplay itself goes. So it's interesting. I love it. Uh, then, uh, we discussed this before, but it looks like the movie for It Takes Two is getting a little bit more of an update. So we're in works here. It's, it's moving along. Um, the update is that Seven Bucks Production joins the DJ2 team as the producers. And if you're not familiar, that's the one headed up by Dwayne Johnson. Mm, okay. Uh, part of his. Uh, so Dwayne Johnson, Danny Garcia, and Herma Garcia. Um, they'll be heading up the production for uh, this particular one. According to sources, Dwayne could also star in the film, but nothing's official now. And I'm not sure how I feel about that and where he would put himself. And why? So is this going to be a live action film? (laughs) Yeah. Well, the way it's looking. Hmm. And I'm like, there isn't a whole lot to go on yet. Yeah. I I mean, if he's going to be. Hoping not, but I don't know what their vision for this is. But Little Rock. I mean, that's that's the whole gag for (laughs) It Takes Two. Little Rock, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, I don't know who he would be. I don't either. Yeah, I don't know. Um, well, I, Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog 2 writers, Pat Casey and Josh Miller, are adapting the game for the screen. So I'm like, well, maybe because we I those other ones are good, right? Yeah. Um. So and I don't know who these other people are. I wrote their names down just in case we knew, but I hadn't heard of it before. Dimitri M. Johnson and Dan Jevons produces for the DJ2 team who's on this uh, project as well. And Stephen Bugage is executive producing. I don't know. Yosef Fares, who's the actual behind the game um, with Hazelite Studios, um, will executive produce as well. So it looks like everyone's got a little bit of their their hands in it. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. I, I, I just, it's a, the, the deal now, it's Amazon and then with this production, I, it just all seems really weird to me. Yeah. But I guess wait and see what happens since it's still very early on. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to put all those pieces together with this little bit of information. It just doesn't line up to me. But um, you guys do you. I don't get paid the money to think that large, I guess. But uh, (laughs) PAX East was going on this weekend. Hope everybody was safe and healthy and clean and even more hygienic than normal. I hope, I hope, I hope. Uh, But there was some announcements that came out of it. And the one that caught my eye is a new Tales from the Borderlands game was announced with Gearbox. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, you are correct. Telltale was the one who did this. Um, and uh, so, of course, I'm like, some of the team coming back, you know, with Telltale, what's going on here? Uh, Pitchford said that the studio thought it would be a fun and interesting dive uh, into the format of interactive fiction. Um, new characters, new stories. Um Further kind of just cementing this looks like it'll be its own thing and not a sequel to what's already been done with Tales from the Borderlands. Mm-hmm. I liked that Telltale game. I did too. I really enjoyed it. Um, obviously, we know Telltale isn't in the fashion that it was then. You know, we all remember lots of things kind of happened to the studio and mm-hmm. kind of broke mm-hmm. up and some came back together. Uh, but it looks like a more formal announcement of that will come this summer. Okay. So just something to kind of keep your eye on. I know I enjoyed the first one thoroughly. This seems like it'll be its own thing, maybe within that universe. Um, but I'm here for it. Yeah. Let's see what let's see what they do. Um, and then the last quick that I had, just because I saw it and I thought it was fun, and I, if people are into this sort of thing, might find it interesting just for a watch as well. Um, <clears throat> found a video because uh, Unreal Five. Mm-hmm. You know, people been downloading that, playing around with it, um, doing it on the PC. Well, they took the Matrix city yeah. from that unreal you know vr event and everything and modded superman in i was and watching that earlier <laughs> like seriously and it looked so good 
did. Yeah. And I just, I mean, obviously you could tell he did um, as generic a Superman as possible sure. or whoever did this. Um, just try not to step on any rights holders or anything. So it's literally just like a blue and red jumpsuit with a cape, mm-hmm. you know, no markings, no nothing. But just a mod. And you can see how well that would work yeah. for a Superman game. I know the biggest complication with a lot of people in Superman games is like, how do you make it fun and interesting with somebody who's basically God without depowering them? I'm with you. I super hate the depowering as a plot point. I've I do. Ar- I've already, I've already uh, described how you do that. Okay. You, uh-huh. you arm your regular criminals. Like mm-hmm. you could say that the criminal, uh, Enterprise in in Metropolis is intergang, which it is. They wind up with kryptonite based weapons, but that's still depowering, right? But that's what they would do, right? Mm. So now you have to kind of work around that. Same with your I villains. Know. Like I see your point, and I feel that might be the only way that they can. But I, 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 but I mean, it doesn't have to be something they do immediately because I was sitting there thinking, like all the supervillains, they could be equal measure to Superman, so it won't be like a, a comparative like Superman as God. But mm-hmm. think about it: how fun would it be? You have the free reign to fly around Metropolis, and when mm-hmm. there's criminal elements or things that you can do as Superman. Yeah, you get to do it, and and you're you're invincible fighting off just minor league thugs. Mm-hmm. Why would that not be fun? You know that there's going to be something harder later on. Give me this. Let me be Superman for a moment and take care of these thugs. Sure, and I'm thinking that maybe we could come up with some sort of complication that would be equal to his power, as opposed to having to take his power away to make it hard. But I mean, I guess is my point, or maybe weapons. more, more, more of him, more creatures like him have to take over the earth or something, and you have to fight them off or yeah. save the earth in that way. Or you know, maybe we don't need to save humans at all. Maybe we could actually have a better fight. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I've given it too much thought after watching this here. But I just feel I wish we could come up with a way that didn't mean having to depower to be complicated and fun. I feel like they're overthinking. And maybe it's too tall of an ass. No, I don't think it is. Give me a Superman game where I can be Superman. Yeah. Period. And then if they have to be superheroes they're fighting or superpowered villains, then so be it. Just so you can not have to just throw kryptonite at the man to make everything hard for us. Do you you know? know how fun it is to fly around in the Lego games as Superman? Oh, I bet. Yeah. Well, I had fun just swinging around as Spider-Man. Yeah, that's what I'm talking so about. So you give me that moment, and that's what that mod was kind of like scratching that itch because yeah. the way that he, he was just flying through the city and the the power slam on the ground, mm-hmm. you know? So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I definitely recommend going and at least watching that video that they put out of how, you know, they modded Superman into this Matrix experience and kind of gave you a test or a little teaser of what mm-hmm. it could look like. Um, hopefully someone maybe is working on it. I don't know. I don't it's feel like those... it's as complicated as they're making it. It's it's really not. Or the other one was just such a flop. Everyone's too scared to touch it again. I don't know. And, from what? Uh, and I get that. But, two or something. But you're missing a giant opportunity. Batman can be an open world. Spider-Man's an open world. Superman definitely needs to be an open world sandbox. Well, I guess those are humans, right? With powers. A little supernatural human, I guess. Like, Well, Batman's just human with gadgets, yeah, right? It's Super not- smart. Super rich. It's Spider-Man, not, still human, got bit by a spider. Still Superman. not complicated. Alien! Not complicated. <laughs> not complicated at all. All right, all right. I believe you. I'll believe you. I'll believe you. But anyway, go check out that mod because hmm. it was cool. It was definitely a fun little taste. And just how cool everything's looking with the engines and everything these days. My God. Um, yeah, it's 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 looking good. Mm-hmm. It's looking good. Um that's all I got that I wanted to chat with you about this week. See, I did knew. I miss any of the 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 points that you were? Yes, what, about? yes, all I did. Three. A lot of them. All three. All says. three. Okay. I had three. Okay, so where did I want to start with this? Uh, I guess first of all, it was announced, mm-hmm. and I don't want to say I should have seen this coming because I don't know if it was going to happen. But now that's happening, it's just like I knew it. <laughs> okay. No More Heroes 3 is coming to all platforms now. Oh, 
Well, I did miss this. Yeah. Ooh. So okay. It'll be PC, uh, Xbox, yes. PlayStation 5, the works, physical, the digital. One, huh? Well, that, yeah, that was the, the part of it I was kind of digging into. Is like, okay, so they said the third one. And of course, obviously, they offered, you know, improved graphics, uh, mm. faster load times, everything that we, we don't are have going to move controls like probably we'll not no because i mean there's really no way. i'm okay with that personally yeah. i think that was my only downfall with it is i didn't want to use the move con- or the remote I what do genuinely they call it now? jesus joy cons yeah i i did not play <laughs> the game with the joy cons i'll admit you told that. me that after yeah and i couldn't figure <clears throat> out how to charge my stupid weapon without it being separated no just mm, rub it on the yeah. the controller like something just rub it on kind of it. dirty you rubbed on it i had to shake it it made me shake it no it was it was kind of <laughs> dirty the way i felt oh, like oh we I all was know doing. what they were doing oh, we all yeah, know yeah. what the point was and i just laughed every time i had to <clears> do it <laughs> so <laughs> so it did bring me joy <laughs> i'm hoping with this announcement that maybe by the time because it said it would be this fall so maybe okay. by the time it comes closer to actually releasing, they will say, oh, yeah, and by the way, we'll part one and two, you can get all three for a bundle, and bye bam Oh, okay. And maybe they'll yeah. be also be improved as well. Maybe that's why they didn't announce it, because maybe they've got a little bit more work to do since they're older games. So maybe they need oh, a little bit more of a I wonder what the port process would be like for that, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. But I, I would kind of hope, since you've gotten at least two of the games, why not all... Of the game, right? Yeah. So we're, we're let's let's get it all done. Um, yeah, yeah, they might be. Second of all, there was a new video for Saints Row, where it's all about uh, customization. And oh, okay. They were like, you know, be your own boss. I think was the name of the video. So obviously, they show like the boss is like, hey, mm-hmm. customize your boss, be whatever kind of person you want. Show like all the options that you could do: mask, hats. You know, mm-hmm. facial hair, uh, genital oh, size, wow. uh, right. skin tone. You can be chrome. You can be green. You can be whatever the hell you want. You whatever know. you want. You want to be uh, he, she, or they. Hey, you can be whatever you want. I love it. Okay. All right. So they were showing a lot of those options. Then they were like showing uh, gun customizations, car customizations, base customizations. Like oh man, everything you can be like you you get to be you. You get to create mm-hmm. your own gang. You get to have every. It's all about okay, customization. I love that. So yeah, I'm in for it. Yeah, because that was that was kind of one of my things when they were announcing it is because they didn't specify anything about doing character creation. That was the one thing I loved about three and four is mm-hmm. I got to make me like me like how I want me to be. In the game. See, I wish I had the patience to really fine tune characters to look like me. I pick hairstyle and then um, skin color, and then I move on with my life. Yeah. I'm like, that's good enough. And I can pretend that's me. <laughs> my husband, though, he does it so meticulous that it's mm. like you look on the screen. I'm like, oh my god, you just like photoed yourself into this game. <laughs> you take so so much time. The the only uh, issue that I can kind of see. I don't even know where I'm going with this. I think I lost my... Because I was trying to hang on oh, to I'm it, sorry. and you kept talking. I'm and... sorry. I do that. <laughs> Damn it. No, you were talking about the customization mm. and how you were here for it. He, she, they, it didn't matter. You could do your bases. Oh, in... I know what I was... Uh, character creation, like when I do it, I'm probably not as interesting as other people are. Because I'm, I'm sure people... There are more people out there who, who want to wear goofy hats or who want to mm. run around in their underwear and... You know, I've got my or vision. very over-proportioned, you've, anything. Yeah, you've got your vision, and, you know, I'm all for it. You play your way, I'll play my way. I want to be this guy. You be your person. So uh-huh. I'm looking forward to it. This might actually be one of those day one, unless they give me a, a reason not to buy the game. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I start hearing uh, ads in the game. <laughs> right or something sinister something then i might have to rethink but they've been all usually been okay like they Mm -hmm. doesn't mean they can't change their stripes but anyway sure uh and finally and i knew this day was going to come that somehow some way the call of duty franchise is going to get me to play their games Oh really? Okay, let's hear this one. Because I, d- I don't I don't want to buy Call of Duty. 
Okay. okay. I don't want to buy a Call of Duty, but they're going to make me. They're going to make me because Call of Duty Warzone is uh-huh. adding a new something. Is it their I zombies mode or quite something? quite figured out what the hell it is. No, I could give a shit about zombies. Oh, okay. I was like, they always throw those. In. This is a new piece of content called Operation Monarch. Would you like to take a guess what that entails? Op- Operation Monarch? Monarch. Does Are that, you the queen? No, does that, <laughs> does that sound like uh, something from a movie franchise that I would be excited about? Probably. Hmm. Oh, the pressure. You know my brain's broken. Okay, so uh, this trailer starts. <laughs> it doesn't work right. And suddenly we're treated with King Kong... Uh, standing atop a mountain and then he looks out to the water and who should arise but Godzilla mm-hmm. and then they go at it okay that sounds like fun and I was like shit because <laughs> now I really want to I want to yeah. play this but uh, I don't know what it is so that's what that's what I have to wait for like, right is what, it a multiplayer thing or yeah like story what or- to what degree Am I getting to see these two Titans again? Um, and how do Interesting. I interact? Interesting. Yeah. So I, I don't how know. Adding that. Interesting. But I saw it and I was like, oh, man, you're going to make me buy this. Don't, don't feel bad. Wanna. I bought one because Bruce Campbell was in the zombies. Mm. And so I bought it. So, see, so this might be my, my that, that, Bruce, Campbell Bruce Campbell thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's your crab leg. <laughs> so, yeah, it's my crab leg. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see uh, i because yeah. depends i'm not paying full price for a damn thing and if yeah, i can wait it have out to wait till the next one comes out and then it would be half off or so yeah if i could something. find it for a deal then maybe i might look yeah. into it so uh but not not now not not initially and again i don't even know what the gameplay is in in this new <laughs> thing so <laughs> it could be something too, yeah. yeah it could be something like where you're playing in a in a map and suddenly you just see Godzilla and King Kong in the background or some stupid shit. And then I, I don't care. I don't want right. to play Call of Duty while they're running around in the background. If there's something a little bit more involved, then sure. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. So yeah. they might not get my money at all. So. But the first time you're, well, let's let's see what's happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> Maybe. But yeah, that, yeah, those are the three things that caught my eye. Oh, fun. Oh, so. fun. I do. I got to go back to No More Heroes. Mm-hmm. The first. I keep forgetting that I actually did get it, amongst all of the freaking games that I have too. Yeah. Boy. And I'll probably rebuy this one on PlayStation Five because mm-hmm. I'm a fan, and right. Um, I'd love to see it on a platform. And it's not crossed over before, right? It's always been Nintendo. PlayStation Three had a copy of the first game but they called it uh heroes paradise i think it was or something like that okay and it was a a remake or a more polished version of the first one for playstation 3 i never played it uh but that was about as far as it went because they and they they incorporated because they had the move controllers and everything so i think that's why they were a lot they they did that but yeah, they, they never really did a lot of cross-pollination with that. And I don't understand mm-hmm. why, because I feel like this Do Nintendo... Do you think it was the mechanics that they kind of trapped themselves into? Probably. Because other consoles couldn't... Yeah, oh. probably. But, I mean, Nintendo's not where that franchise belongs, you know? It's it does seem like a odd. weird marriage. It is. That, it yeah, really yeah. is. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't fit the brand. Mm-hmm. So, I'm... I'm surprised by it, to be honest, but... Well, I mean, they did also have, what was that, Manhunt game on the Wii, too? Yeah, but that like started on the PlayStation. That's, that started on the PlayStation. Sam- to, to see it on Nintendo, though, always kind of made me go, oh, interesting. Conker's Bad Fur Day on the 64. That was another one of those oddball oh, yeah. games. Now, granted, it's on the, the Xbox, but at the time, it was just like, what is this game on the Nintendo? This does not belong here. <laughs> It's like you've got this cute little Disney character and he's as foul mouthed as they get. This is absolutely not what you need on this platform for kids. For kids, yeah. For the kids. <laughs> but that's all, right. all that's all I got. That's all I got. I don't. Is that I don't our have, show? Yeah, because I don't have anything 
uh, headliner because I was busy. I had a video. And yeah, the video, you know, which we can't wait to see that later ate today. ate up my time. So that's, now, that's your headliner. That's 15 minutes of my time. Well, 15 minutes of a video is more than 15 minutes <laughs> It's of my like time. I was going to say it took you longer than that, yeah, I'm sure. It's yes. 15 minutes. Uh, so that, that take that as your headliner for the day. You know, that's, you that's what you got to do. Well, uh, one little other thing that I thought might make you happy, just a little quick, eh? Okay. Dying Light 2 did top 5 million copies sold. And right. I know we were a little concerned about its start there. I mean, I know the OG game was a little, a mm-hmm. lot more than that. But hey, in four weeks, maybe it's doing well. Maybe, maybe one of these days in 10 years time, I'll have, I'll get around to that one is also. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, <laughs> I I've so kind many of, games. Yeah, I've. I hate to say it, I've forgotten about it, you know? It was just like, oh, yeah, yeah. that is a game that came out, and I guess I kind of want to play it, but... Here's my problem, I think, lately, is when I sit down to play a game, and maybe this is with you, too, I don't know, the the fact that there's so many that I haven't, that mm-hmm. I've wanted to, I'll sit there and get overwhelmed at which one I actually want to pick, and then yeah. end up going with something dumb that I've played a million times before, because I'm just now wanting to waste time, and... My brain shuts down on, oh, my God, but this is so detailed or this will take so long or what's the difference be spending 400 hours in this? No, I get it. I mean, (laughs) there's still there's so much. What was that? I think uh, where I was playing Godzilla on the PlayStation 4, it was just one of those I kind of went back to because I don't have to take a lot of time for Mm -hmm. it. It was just like, I'll kill some time. Yeah. And I'm still trying to, to achieve the unattainable platinum on that fucking game. So it just feels <laughs> like you. I'll get there eventually. Mm-hmm. So I'll just play it off and on and I'll just, I'll get that trophy eventually. It just it sure. might take me a couple of years, but by God, I'll, I'll get there. It'll happen. <laughs> yeah. And maybe I'll get into the, to the rhythm of playing the game again because of there for a while. I, I think it was at the beginning of the year when I had COVID. <laughs> I got back into playing it, you know, cause it was like, Hey, this is kind of fun. I had time. Yeah. yeah. I had time. So who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep plugging along with Mass Effect because I just want to, hopefully I can get through the first one and that's not the only mechanic. Otherwise, that might might be a rough go for me. I might have mm. to kick the difficulty all the way down to just casual just so I can get through the story and move on to the next game, which is supposedly better. So Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the combat hasn't been hard, but whatever will just get me. So far, anyway. I'm a normal mode player. We've discussed this. I don't feel the need to go ridiculous. or. You know, you reminded me. You know what I do have <clears throat> that I could play? I just got to mm. download it. Um, You know, that Slay the Spire game came out on the PlayStation. Oh, yes! So I do have <laughs> that. Another one of us. <laughs> one I could, of us. I could just give it a try to see what all the fuss is about. You should, just to see. I mean, if you're not into, like, roguelike uh card games and things like that you probably won't enjoy it but my god if i ever let myself sit down and play it i'll be addicted to it for another several weeks before i uninstall and go nope walk away for a while so i would be interested to hear if that's the one that would catch your eye i mean i i'll I'll give it a go like i said i don't i I added it to my library for a reason so Mm -hmm. i can i can play around with it if i don't get into it i'll know it's definitely um just if you're the type that gets super salty over like bad RNG, it'll probably eventually get on your last nerve when okay. you're close to. <laughs> but then you hit play a new one anyway, and you don't know what you're doing with yourself. Uh, but excellent. Well, that's our show. That's our show. You can hit us up sometime on Twitter at Super Mega Crash or go to Instagram to view the weekly icon art Stephen puts time and love into. You can send us an email to supermegacrash at gmail.com. You can support the show by liking and leaving reviews on your preferred podcast listening app and even going to patreon.com forward slash pencil and paper productions. And if you want to see some other really cool stuff Stephen does, go over to youtube.com forward slash pencil and paper productions. We suck at Discord. Make us better. Come join our Discord. Please. Yeah, come on over there. There's like two of us that peeks in every once in a while. Links are in the... We need three. Yeah, links are in the (laughs) doobly-doo down below, so check it out. Links are in the doobly-doo below. So thank you so much for listening. I am Lacey O'Finley. I am Stephen White. And you could join us again next time, Super Mega Crash siblings. But until then... Game on!
This has been a Pencil and Paper Podcast Network production.